Welcome to another C++ tutorial. Today we're going to get into classes, which is the heart of C++ here, because we want to make this an object-oriented uh, programming. Uh, before we were doing more functional programs. In fact, most of our stuff was within the function main, and we haven't actually done a whole lot of um, utilizing functions. But we're going to skip right into classes and utilize classes probably from here on out and functions. So this is Microsoft Visual Studio again, which in, which you must include this include stdafx.h or it will not work. It'll work in other IDEs without this, but just remember you need this. Uh, we've got a return zero for the main, but let's go ahead and put our pause function in there before we forget. Integer pause, cn pause. Remember, white space doesn't matter, so the semicolons are the end of the statement. Um, I didn't include aisle stream yet, so let's go ahead and do that. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a class. And what a class is, it, it resembles an object, a real-life object. Picture like a point in space. A point in space might have an x, a y, and a z coordinate. So your object would be the point. The point has attributes or characteristics. The point is an x coordinate, a y coordinate, and a z coordinate. Let's go ahead and create that example and uh, go from there. It's probably the easiest way to learn it. So to create a class, you just type in the keyword class, and then we're going to use uh, point as the name of the class. And every class has wrapped around in brackets and the semicolon at the end. Uh, by convention only, typically they uppercase the first letter of a class. OK, so classes have um, two different areas in general called public and private and you separate them with a colon and what that means is now this is a little bit difficult to grasp at first but once you grasp it it's ingenious it's great anything in the public area so anything between public and private can be accessed by any other area of your program in this function main I can access these public member functions these public variables but I can't access these private ones. Um, so that's good because we want to separate out you want to separate out all the internal workings of a class and only allow the function main to access the things that you want it to access. Now imagine you know a hundred people using your class that you created. You create this point class that works perfect. You can add points with other points. You can you can um, have multiple points. You can delete points. You can you can do all kinds of things with points, but all the implementation is buried in this class. When I want to create a point in this main function, I may never see any of this stuff except for what's in the public area, like set point or get point or remove point. Those things might be public domain. But now to actually access the X, Y, or Z, you may not want somebody to just go in there and access that. And like I said, I'll show you more examples, and let's just get this one started so we can get a very simple class going. So in the public area, we are going to want to set a point, but we need a place to store those different characteristics, like integer x chord, y chord, and z chord. So there's three integer variables. We can even have other uh, data types in there. We can have a double, we can have um, characters, we can have strings, whatever you want. Let's uh, just to make the example a little bit better, let's put a string in there and we'll add the uh, string header up here at the top. And we're going to create a standard string called, um, we'll just call it name. So we're going to name the point. So just to show you multiple data types in the private area and how to set them and get them in the public area. So let's set these coordinates and get these coordinates. So to create a set function, typically you could do something like this. You can do a, a, a we're going to start off with void set chord, which is making this up. And what am I going to bring into this function? I'm going to bring in three variables, integer x, integer y, integer z. I'm going to bring those three variables in, and I'm going to define my function right here in this area. Uh, later down the road I'm going to show you how to separate the uh, actual implementation and this will just be the um, the headers only. But we'll, we'll get to that. So to set that, we're going to make this very simple. We're not going to error check anything. We're not going to set limits. 
we are simply going to say x coordinate, which is part of my class now, is equal to x. y coordinate is equal to y, and z is equal to z. Now you can see in this function, we could set parameters and say, hey, check to see if x is within our limits. If it is, go ahead and assign it this permanent value x. Oh, I'm sorry, this permanent value x chord, which is part of your class. Y chord is part of your class, and Z chord is part of your class. You might want to do some error checking, some limits to make sure these are actual valid values. Maybe you want it between negative 100 and 100 per value. Maybe you have some sort of 3D matrix that's only 100 by 100 by 100. So check that first. Instead of making this a void, you'd make that a bool. If these do not abide by your rules, return false and let the user re input. See how that can work? And we'll get into some more elaborate ones later, but for now, let's keep this very simple. So we have a set coordinate function. That's a public function. Now let's do a print coordinate function, which isn't going to take in anything. And all we're going to do is print to the screen all three coordinates. Uh, let's go ahead and just print it this way. We'll do um, x, comma, y, oop, excuse me on that comma, we have to add the actual, there we go, comma, y, comma, and z, and we'll close parentheses, and end line, okay? See a lot of red there, I'm not sure. Oh, x coordinate, y coordinate, z coordinate. I'm losing myself here. So x chord, and I'll just copy that. We want to print out the actual stored, stored integer values down here, because these ones are permanent record, basically. These x, y, and z's here are only part of the scope one time when it's in this function. Okay, so we have a set coordinate, we have a print coordinate. Now let's do a set name and a get name. So let's do void set name. We're going to name the point. And we're going to bring in a standard string called name of point, whatever you want to call it. We're going to do the same thing. We're just going to go ahead and make the name equal to name of point. Okay, so we set it. We have no way to display it or get it until we create that. Um, so let's go ahead and do that as well. Uh, void. Now uh, we'll do a get. We'll do a. We're gonna bring back a string. We're gonna bring back a standard string called, and we're gonna make the function called get get name. And we don't have to bring in anything. And all we're gonna do is return the name. See how that works now? So this name, when when the when a function calls get name, it'll return a standard string back to whatever called it. Okay? And obviously name is a permanent record down here. You typically would put most of the storage of your uh, attributes of your class under the private area, but not all the time, and we'll get into that. So everything in the public is accessible by any other part of your program. But in this main function, I can't touch the x, y, or z coordinate. And that makes sense because when you start putting limitations on these and different um, parameters, you only want the user to be able to use the function that you want him to use or her to use. Okay, so if, if, um, if I was able to just do this and say x chord equals 200, well, that, or that, broke, that broke my limitation of Remember, I was saying you can make it, you know, between negative 100 and 100. Um, so if I could just jump in there and cr do this, uh, that would defeat the purpose. So you can't do that. This will actually give you an error. It's already underlined. I can't access these um, uh, variables. So let's let's use this object. Let's let's do this. This object is no different than an integer or a double or a character or a standard string. It is now your class called point. So let's create a point object or data type, whichever way you want to refer to. So I'm going to create a point and I'm going to name the variable um, 
left point. Okay. Right now it's doing nothing. Now let's do left point, and then you'll see when you hit the period, we'll call it a dot in C++, left point dot, you see all these different member functions. It's not going to bring up any private functions. It's only going to offer you the member functions. So let's go ahead and set the coordinate uh, to whatever we want, 10, 17, negative 45. That's the coordinate we want to set. Now let's do that point dot, and now we have set name. Let's call that um, whatever you want to call it. Let's call it a, well, I'm going to call it my left point. Simple enough. Now, let's go ahead and print this. Dot um, print coordinate and let's create a standard string called my point name and set that equal to left point dot get name because it's returning a standard string. See? Okay, let's go ahead and build this. See if we get any errors. I'm sure there's usually one or two. Nope, we're good. Build succeeded. We've got that pause function in there. Go ahead and hit F5 to uh, run the debugger. And here we go. We have 10, 17, negative 45. And we did get the string name. We just didn't do anything with it, so it's kind of pointless code. Uh, we can go ahead and print that too. See how And my point name. Let's run that again. Hit F5, rebuild. And it's going to be called left point. It is 10, 17, negative 45. Now, this code is not very user friendly because what if I didn't actually assign anything but I tried to print it? Your X, Y, and Z's have never been initialized. You might want to come up with a default initializer. You can do that down here as well x coordinate equals zero, y coordinate equals zero. Now zeros might not be the best way to do this because you might actually have a point zero 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 but maybe this is just a default location start in the center. Let's hit F5 one more time just to make sure there's no errors and we're still good. So right now it's 10, 17, negative 45 but let's go ahead and get rid of the actual uh, set point. So set coordinate we're gonna pretend that never happened by commenting that out so we never set the point, but what, but yet we're going to print the coordinates. So it should, based on our code, print 0, 0, 0, if everything's all good. And there we go, 0, 0, 0. And you can do the same thing with your, uh, your name and all that. So just remember, you have public functions that are accessible to anywhere in, the, anywhere in your code, and then you have private functions that the only thing that can access this is inside your class itself. So inside of these public member functions, I am like for example this name, name is in the private area on line 31 here. The only thing that can access name are within the class. That's why you have to use set name and you can't just use name in your main function. A little bit confusing, you're gonna have to do a lot of practice with these. Uh, instead of creating coordinates, maybe create a square or create a um, a circle. A circle contains what? A radius. Maybe you can calculate the circumference. A circle or maybe a sphere. You can do a volume. All those kinds of things. So maybe set radius and then you can calculate volume and spit that out. Lots of different things you can do. Uh, this is a very first class. It's very simple and generic but I think this will get the point across.